Reminder, turn mics on. Oh, that's the only one we have responsibility for. I'll wait for Joel to get his camera set. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me okay? I'll sound over. Check, check, check. One. All right. Thank you very much uh, for coming out today. Appreciate it very much. Um, my name is Rick Becker. I'm a representative for District 7, Bismarck. And we have called this press conference uh, to shed light on and raise awareness of the most unfortunate political tactics employed by our governor, Doug Burton, members of his own party. You are likely aware, it has, as it has been reported in local and national media, that Governor Burgum has been using unprecedented amounts of his vast wealth to not only influence, but outright determine the outcome of legislative races across this state. Our points are twofold. It is improper and it is likely illegal. First, his actions are unseemly, improper, and an affront to the people of North Dakota. 
By influencing these elections, he is subverting the separations of power, the branches of government, and the checks and balances therein, things that we respect and cherish. His lack of transparency in this matter is a slap in the face to North Dakotans. He refuses to be forthcoming on who he is helping, who he is opposing, and what his goals are with legislative races. He is undermining the process of our representative government, in most cases, by executing a plan to defeat the very candidates who were endorsed by their districts. Everyday conservative North Dakotans used their time and money to support candidates and rally them to endorsement victories, only to have Governor Burgum swoop in with his millions of dollars to undo what they accomplished. He is the de facto head of the state Republican Party, yet his actions are damaging the Republican Party as a whole, and in particular, diminish the efforts of local grassroots Republicans. His actions absolutely are improper and unbecoming to the governor's office. As to the legality, I direct you to Article 5, Section 10 of the North Dakota State Constitution, which says in part, a governor who threatens any member that the governor will remove any person or persons from office or position with intent in any manner to influence the action of that member must be punished in the manner now or may, that may hereafter be provided by law. First, we know it is a breach of the intent of the Constitution. In North Dakota, the governor's office was designed to be fairly weak, giving more power to the North Dakota legislature thereby keeping power closer to people. The intent of Section 10 is that legislators must be free of coercion, menace, and threats from the governor so as to avoid any undue influence. The governor's actions are so broad and so impactful that they do indeed constitute a threat to legislators. He formed a multi-candidate committee, the Dakota Leadership Pact. Dakota Leadership Pack and staffed it with people directly loyal to him. He then self-funded it to the tune of $4.7 million of his own wealth. In a state where a legislative campaign commonly runs five to $20,000, this man has dumped a staggering and very menacing $4.7 million. In 2020, Governor Burgum used this influence to go after conservatives. He was fairly successful, including unseating Representative Jeff Delzer, the powerful chair of appropriations. When unusual circumstances put Representative Delzer back in, Governor Burgum, blind to the unsavoriness of his ambitions, took it to the state Supreme Court at taxpayer expense to get Representative Delzer removed again, but he failed. Once again, Governor Burgum is now attempting to unseat the chair of House appropriations. The governor's pack hanging ominously over the head of every legislator with its millions of dollars to be used against them if they fall out of favor in no uncertain terms goes against the intent and design of the North Dakota state constitution. But is it illegal? That will be for a court to decide, but I will provide an argument that I believe has merit. The standard that must be met is whether, by his actions, the governor has threatened legislators with an intent to influence their actions. Certainly, if the governor made a blanket statement that he will unseat any legislators that stand in the way of his vision, that he will unseat them, it would be meeting that threshold. We therefore know that the threat need not be constrained to a specific topic or bill or action. The question, therefore, hinges on whether there is a bona fide threat. The governor, you may or may not know, routinely texts, calls, meets with legislators in an attempt to sway their vote. That's the way things work. But an example of that threat question, I relay to you an instance when the governor very much wanted me to vote a certain way and to help sway the vote of other legislators. I refused. He leaned in close, keeping a firm grip on my hand, and said, I don't want to be on the wrong side of this one. Now, for me, I wouldn't consider that a threat. I would consider it a strong nudge. But put it in the context that there is a multi-million dollar pack out there that will take out anybody who opposes the governor. And that is an ever-present threat. It's very much like a mafia boss who's got a 
Hitman goes out and breaks a few legs. The Mafia boss doesn't need to go out and make verbal threats anymore. He's got the Hitman standing behind him smiling. It's an implied threat. And that's what Dakota leadership is. It's the Hitman that is the implied threat to every legislator. Now, what about free speech? Donating to campaigns is free speech. The United States Supreme Court said so. However, the North Dakota Constitution says that when it comes to legislators, the governor does not have the same free speech rights as citizens. For example, a citizen can threaten a legislator that they will do everything in their power to unseat that legislator if they don't vote the right way. But the governor is prohibited from doing that. So let there be no question, the North Dakota Constitution does not give the governor the same free speech rights as a regular citizen. I believe, for me, the governor does have the right to make a small contribution to favored candidates as an expression of his free speech. However, when instead the contribution funds a PAC with amounts more than the entire budget of any given campaign, his actions move from free speech to threatening speech. The actions of the governor and deaf to the proper functioning of a healthy republic evoke the specter of elite authoritarianism. The citizens of North Dakota deserve much better. We demand that the governor stop now. We demand that he respects his party and more importantly, respects the citizens of North Dakota. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. My name is Sebastian Ertelt, current state representative uh, for District 26, uh, which was uh, basically dissolved in the legislative redistricting uh, process. And I am currently a resident and a candidate in District 28 uh, for the state Senate. So uh, good afternoon to my fellow legislators, uh, both here and in the audience, uh, candidates for public office, members of the press, and the people of the great state of North Dakota. Over 130 years ago, the framers of our state constitution, much like those of the Constitution of the United States, put in place safeguards against tyrants. One of those safeguards is found in Article 5, Section 10 of the state constitution, which has already been referenced. What the governor is doing may well be unconstitutional. Governor Burgum is trying to run both the executive and legislative branches of state government. It is clear that Governor Burgum is attempting to influence not only legislators, but other statewide elected officials through his substantial financial contributions to the multi-candidate committee Dakota Leadership Pack, which in turn runs political ads for his political allies or against conservative political opponents. This has a tremendous chilling effect on the independence of the legislative process. I do thank the press for covering these actions of the governor, which took place during the 2020 elections and is happening again this election year. The freedom of the press is also meant to safeguard the people against tyrants. In the 2021 regular session, I introduced House Bill 1496 to increase transparency of political expenditures by requiring, requiring reporting of who and how much is spent for or against a ca candidate or ballot measure. I encourage the next legislative assembly to revisit this legislation. The governor, via the Dakota Leadership Act, is interfering in the legislative race in my own legislative district, 28, where I am seeing the state Senate seat. This district is of particular interest due to the governor's interference in the district's legislative race in 2020. And begs the question, did the governor influence the legislative redistricting bill that significantly changed the boundaries of District 28 to the benefit of his 2020 team who are running in this year as a team, despite not having the full endorsement of 
the grassroots district Republican Party. Not only are the governor's actions unethical relative to his capacity as governor, but also in his capacity as executive committee member of the North Dakota Republican Party. The country club Republicans are trying to silence the grassroots Republicans. Leading by bad example, the governor has influenced the North Dakota Republican Party State Chairman Perry Schaefer and several district party chairmen to either withhold support of endorsed candidates or provide support to unendorsed candidates, including North Dakota Republican Party District 28 Chairman Bart Schott. I call on these individuals to resign immediately. In total, there are 14 legislative districts with contested Republican primary races, seven for the Senate and 13 for the House. These include the districts of 3, 7, 8, 15, 19, 20, 24, 25, 28, 31, 33, 35, 39, and 47. I urge the people to look at who is paying for political advertising in these races and to reject the governor's election interference through the Dakota Leadership Pact in these districts and any statewide races or ballot measures. I also call on Governor Burgum to stop this interference in our elections and undermine of our constitutional republic, which calls for a separation of powers. I further call on the Dakota Leadership Pact to return the financial contributions from Governor Burgum. Finally, it's up to you. You decide. You decide who will represent you, not the Dakota Leadership Pact and not Governor Burgum. Hello, everyone. For the record, I'm Rep. Jeff Magrum. I represent District 28 in the House now. I'm a Senate candidate in District 8. And uh, I'm just going to tell you, it's pretty easy to get upset and take it personal and get attacked with dishonest and defaming information during the election, but it's very disheartening when it's your own governor. There's a reason that Article 5, Section 10 was put in our North Dakota State Constitution. And I understand we made a lot of enemies this last session. Why? We had the most important bills. Can you still hear me? We had the most important bills. Think about it. We had the pro-life bills. We tried to push the abortion clinic out of North Dakota. Hello? And uh, election integrity. I had the Zuckerberg bill and our, my fellow conservatives. We, we stopped outside money from coming into North Dakota to influence our elections. We had the stand your ground legislation that was very successful. Now, the stand your ground, it allows you to not have to run and hide if a criminal is attacking you anywhere in the state of North Dakota. We sponsored several bills. If we had support from the establishment, we could have lowered property taxes, either at least by half or more, using money that's in the bank. We had a bill to make the state health officer an elected position. We had the term limits bill. Term limits. Can you hear me now? We had the term limits bill that would have limited terms for legislators and the governor. We had the prohibition on vaccine mandates and vaccine passports. Isn't that what the people wanted, right? We did that. We worked for you guys. We were in here fighting against that emergency declaration. Remember that? That's not even that long ago. It's only a little more than a year ago. We told him, we're not leaving, the governor I'm talking about, we told him, we're not leaving this capital until that emergency declaration is rescinded. And he rescinded it right after we left. But we were the ones fighting when he had the small businesses shut down. Remember that? Small businesses telling them what hours they could have, what, what capacities they could have. 
we were the ones that got legal action was going to happen, but they, he backed down and then he opened them up. But it wasn't for the conservative legislatures, us standing here as well as many others, fighting for the people. And now, guess what? We're being targeted. And so the one that the governor vetoed, that remember the mask bill, Jeff? Representative Overson, he had the gala. We had a, a lot of people. Scott Hen in there were running the deal. We, we had the, the, what that bill did is prevent the state from enforcing a mask mandate, and he vetoed it. And then the people rose up and came to the Capitol, and the veto was overridden. So. So, I mean, we were working, we were listening to the people and doing what you wanted. And now Reverend Holson, Reverend Verdelt, and I are being targeted with what? Hate mail. It's literally hate mail. There's a century code called 16.1-10. Look it up. It talks about using uh, false information to defame people. And that is a real law, but we're not going to get into that because that's not the point. But this hate mail, really, I mean... People, even people campaign to say, we're going to cut the budget. We're going to go work. Well, we did. We, uh, we campaigned for cutting the budget. We're at record spending levels by far. And then we go and we, we tell them, well, we, we're, we're spending too much money on these budget bills. So we try to try to reduce that. And then in the National Guard, what was really offensive is they were going to cut first responders' equipment by half a million dollars but yet the record spending. And I said, I can't support that. And so now all of a sudden I'm against the National Guard. What an insult. I love the National Guard. I got a lot of family members that are in the military and the police too. I mean, that almost looks like a movie thing. I mean, it's just like bizarre. Oh, well, that's... That's pretty well, we don't know where that money's coming from. I think that people have been trying to find out, but that's uh, dark money, so we can't find that money. But I think it's odd, odd that they're uh, targeting the legislators as a leadership pack. But anyway, so that was my on the budget bills. My supporters have always wanted me to be a fiscal hawk. So when I vote no, I'm seeing things in these bills that are pork. So that's why I vote against them. It's not because I don't support any of these organizations, because that's all false. I believe the governor's anger is causing him to cross the line of separation of powers. That is prohibited in Article 5, 7, 10, the North Dakota State Constitution that we all took an oath to uphold. How can I honestly say that I support the military if I don't stand up to this abuse of power right here in our own state? I respectfully ask the governor to stop funding candidates and please stop the untruthful and slanderous campaign against several of us. Governor Burgum, please let the people of North Dakota choose their legislators without interference by the governor's office and influence. Dividing these legislative districts, causing divisions among our people, does not promote tranquility. We know from history that a state divided against itself cannot stand. Our people have been through enough hardships. We just went through the corona. There's been all kinds of things going on, and prices are high. We need peace now. Governor Burgum, let's put our differences aside and bring the great people of North Dakota together for the greater good. Memorial Weekend is here. Let's stop the attack on our people and their government. People of North Dakota, vote with your heart. And vote for candidates that will represent you in your government. Realizing that nothing can be right, done right now if the governor doesn't stop other than your vote for the people that aren't bought by the governor. You will know his candidates by their many mailers and media ads. 
And the main pack is the Dakota Leadership Pack. It's printed on their flyers. Are we not a government of the people, by the people, and for the people anymore? You have the power. You got the power. He doesn't have it. You have it. The people have the power, and we can show him that we don't agree what he's doing by not supporting his candidates this election. <laughs> Let's show the governor who's boss. You're the boss. The people are the boss. Reject the governor's candidates and vote for the people's candidates. And that, I mean, the ones that are going to answer to you, not to him. So vote for the for us, the people's candidates. God bless all of you. I'm willing to stand for questions, and I think Jack Duro right here with the Bismarck Tribune has one. What's your intention? I personally am hoping that he just respects the people in this state and stop trying to be a tyrant and, and dominating over everybody. And that, that's what I would hope for, that he just stops. I, uh, Jack, I would say that uh, based on us coming forth in this manner, we're giving the governor an opportunity to do our thing. Uh, should that not happen, we'll have to review our options. <laughs> Is there any other questions? Hi, I'm Julie with Fox News. Um, where does the ethics committee stand on all of this? Are, are they involved at all? Uh, we certainly have not contacted the ethics committee. I'm sure that there has been no formal complaint filed in this regard. Um, I, I suppose that's one avenue to go. I think that a lot of the conservatives are not fans of the structure of the ethics committee. It's not something natural for us to uh, lean to, but I suppose that is something that should be considered. Thank you. If I may answer that question, a good question from the last campaign when the Dakota Leadership Pack went after the treasurer, Dan Johnson, you might remember. I remember it well because the misleadingness violating 16.1, the chapter in the Century Code, stating, claiming that, that he was a tax cheat. Some of you maybe got the brochures that had Dan's hands red-handed. It was a complete lie, and, or it was a stretch of the truth. The century code is clear, misleading. You know, maybe there's a technicality there that's a fact, but it's misleading. So I took it upon myself at that time to find out, is there anything we can do about this? I was told, we'll call the attorney general. So I called the attorney general's office. They said, well, you need to call the state's attorney. So I called the state's attorney. Well, you need to call the sheriff. So I called the sheriff. Well, the sheriff said, you need to call the state's attorney. So round and round I went. When we got into session, I did contact the ethics com commission. They were willing to see the evidence. And so I had to go collect all the, all the brochures and everything. Then the session was over. By the time I was done, Running around in circles, I was so exhausted. I had other things I had to do, like help fight for your freedom and stuff like that, that were just more important. So that's how the game is played. Go ahead, Tom. Well, I'm not a reporter, but I, there's one question that I have really been wondering about. As go, Governor Burgum, of all the governors North Dakota, Hat. Is he the first one to do that? Has any research been done in that area that any other governor uh, has has done that? Uh, the chairman of uh, the district chairman of uh, District 29 and I met with uh, Senator Holt, and I asked that question of him, and his response was, in his memory, he could not think of any of the most recent governors that have done what. Uh, is doing right 
Well, I don't have the, the end all answer. My, my understanding has not been done in this manner. This is a very in your face uh, approach. And certainly politics is a slimy business. There's no doubt in my mind that in the past governors have been only influential, but they've not been so bold as to just come out and, and, and essentially give the, give the uh, obvious appearance of controlling elections. Go ahead, there's a young guy back there who wanted to ask a question. Hey, uh, John, this is Kerr, a local business owner in Bethlehem, uh, Delbro. Um, are there any other facts that we should be paying attention to? Which other facts? The Brighter Future Pack is, we call it the Darker Future Pack because they're all about darkness. And then you have the, uh, the uh, Dakota Leadership Pack, which is the governor's pack, right? The Dakota Leadership. And so they're, they're, they're working in conjunction. Every mailer that they send out all their mailers together, like they are just one right after the next. You get one of these for the opposition and then you get one of these hits, like in my particular district. They'll send out one for the governor's guys and one for the one against the people's guys. They want to try to take over the government that way. I mean, it's it's definitely an attack on, but yeah, they continually send them out. It's their Dakota. These are all the Dakota leadership pack. Jeff, that one appears to be paid for by David Yurkin. There is one he paid for, but then this one here says right here, paid for by Dakota leadership pack. Nate Martindale, treasurer, right there. That's the governor's pack. So if you support the governor, then you'll vote for his guys in this pack, but th then he'll have total control of the government. We have three separate branches of government for a reason. There's a checks and balance that way. If you have the, the uh, executive branch taking over the legislative branch, the people don't have a voice. We are the people's branch. We are the ones supposed to be working for the people directly. So if he takes control of the people's branch, the people have no voice because you have the executive branch and then you have the, the uh, Supreme Court, the legislative, you have legislative, I'm getting flustered here, <laughs> judicial branch. So yeah, branches. I haven't seen the Rough Rider Pack doing too much. I, I, look, I mean, I believe, if I recall correctly, but I hate to say it publicly, I think that that is, is in the Dawson chapter, who uh, was with the governor's office in the past. Uh, I think they were responsible for leak of the um, like it information before the convention. That's, I believe, that's the Rough Rider. Josh. No, no, it's a one two punch. Um, some people have speculated that they're working together. I that's purely speculation. Um, it, it, and so our focus is on Dakota leadership and the governor. Uh, the question being asked, are there other PACs? Brighter Future Alliance would be one uh, that is most unfortunate in its approach because it has blatant lies. Um, and that's something, unfortunately, uh, we have to be faced with. Politics has always been filled with some misrepresentations and distortions and spins. But Pat Finken with Brighter Future Alliance has taken it to a whole new level and relies completely on an uninformed voter to get the results he's looking for. However, that being said, that's not why we're here today. We're bringing light to the Dakota um, leadership back in Doug Burgum. Yep. Good question. Um, my name is Sheila Heiser. I'm just a concerned citizen here in um, this rock of Dakota. Um, has there been any research? I mean, this obviously isn't just Doug Burgum. I mean, I even answered, asked myself the question, where in this world did that come from? I mean, has 
to approach North Dakota like this. I mean, he's not, he, he fakes himself out to be like a cowboy, puts it, you know, he tries to put himself in our shoes, but he's really not. I mean, I, has there been any research I, on I understand what you're saying, and a, a lot of people uh, have similar concerns to yours. However, I would be um, uh, very careful in uh, to not make things personal. Uh, in my mind, we need look no further than what we've spoken about already. Yeah. Yep. Um, I noticed just as of this morning that Hill um, did an entire article um, called "North Dakota First Spend." against members of own party in primaries. What else are you hearing from outside the state? Are, are you getting any feedback from people who are, are hearing about this? And, and what do you think about the- it, It's catching some attention. So the question is, the Hill covered it. Are we hearing anything else? I spoke yesterday with the leader of a national conservative organization that is uh, essentially shocked uh, at what's happening in North Dakota. Um, and we'll see if anything comes of that. Yes. I'd like to propose a go forward. In 1966, Ronald Reagan, when he was campaigning for governor of California, he had an 11th commandment. And to our Republican Party of North Dakota, it is time we adopt this. Thou shall not speak ill of any fellow Republican. On a go for basis, I would encourage every one of us to adopt it. This has been done. We are fighting another party, and we need to come together. I'm ashamed of what this party has done. It is time. We quit speaking. All of this trash that I've seen Becker, Dan Johnson, Jeff Bergen, Jeff Thorson, I'm appalled. And I, I'm sorry, I'm upset. And my, I am from District 24, and my husband is now running for the state house. And I, I want to see this dissolved. We need a change. And it's an embarrassment. We're one of the strongest states in the United States. And look, you're asking questions. Is any other governor doing this or any other PAC? And we are doing it. I agree. It's um I, I agree it would be nice if we could focus our efforts to fight against the progressive leftists in Washington, DC that are destroying the country. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I'm hog. So I'd like to actually back up a couple questions. There are, at least there were in, in the 2020 election, other uh, multi-candidate committees who were doing similar uh, type of advertising. And that's actually the reason that I brought forth uh, the bill that I did. It, it was actually not targeted at uh, the governor's, uh, the Dakota leadership pack at the time because I had not received that myself. Um, but there were other multi-candidate committees at it. So um, I don't remember the names of them offhand, but um, I'd certainly be willing to look that up for anybody who's interested. And as far as uh, not speaking ill of anyone else in your particular uh, party, I, I, I want to say that I am happy to defend my voting record, um, but I think where the, the candidates up here or legislators are drawing the line is when you get into actual violations of the law and uh, misleading attacks and, and outright lies. That's that's where the law line needs to be drawn. And and the main reason that we are here is because of the governor's uh, involvement uh, in the legislative process in, in elections. So. So, the bill that you introduced last session, if that was to be advanced, it would have to 
Yeah, so again, the, the bill that I had introduced, it, it did not address all types of uh, entities that may do political advertising. It was focused on the candidates themselves, multi-candidate committees, single candidate committees, uh, ballot measure committees, et cetera. And uh, so if, yeah, if legislation was brought forth, certainly you could look at any any number of expansions, I guess, of that idea. Um, but what I was targeting was simply some transparency on the actions that we knew were taking place with multi-candidate committees in particular. Um, and I do did want to mention, I mean, he just made mention of uh, the Secretary of State's website, because I think there was some question about, you know, where we find this information. And uh, if you go to the Secretary of State's website, it's sos.nd.gov. And on the left hand side of that site, you can find uh, some uh, campaign finance disclosure, and you can search by candidate or by committee, etc. And it might take a little bit of, of navigating that page to understand where the money is flowing to and, and, and from rather, because uh, it actually doesn't give you a whole lot of where the money is going, uh, except for paths such as uh, the Brighter Future Alliance. They actually have to show who they are spending for or against, whereas the multi-candidate committees, candidates themselves are reporting who they are receiving money from. Yes, Tom. Yeah, I just want to add to the statement that you made a little bit ago about Ronald Reagan in 1980. I think it was 1980 saying you should not uh, say anything ill of a fellow Republican. I really believe Ronald Reagan would have a heart attack today in 2014. <laughs> Please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not saying that about you guys. I'm saying what's being said about you. Okay. It's not, it's one of the flyers that are going out yep. that are being said. The lies that are saying about you, Jeff. If there are any last uh, media questions, we can take those. And then um, if people still want to talk, let's, we can mingle about if you'd like. But I hate for things to take longer than necessary. Any media questions? Yes, Josh. Yes. Well, there are there are many issues, and and uh, we wouldn't expect that anyone being supported or opposed is one hundred percent with or against. Uh, if you're looking at some big picture things, frankly, I would be looking at carbon sequestration and storage and who's going to play ball with that. Um, that's why you have John Hoven and Doug Burgum coming together, perhaps an unlikely pair. Uh, but that's where the money trail is going to lead. That's why you've got different entities uh, all gearing up to support the same people. So the goal is uh, we've got an, uh, a new frontier in, in North Dakota called CO2. And what they want is a legislature that will do uh, what will enact their vision. All right, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks. All right.